Hello, Hopkinton High School, and welcome to HHS Today. We're your hosts, Mac Lind and Connor Kelly. We have an exciting episode for you guys today, so enjoy. First, we have an action-packed minute with the principal segment. Some of us here in the HHS TV class took on Mr. Bishop and company in a classic game of 42. Guys, where are they? I don't know. I think they just chickened out. No, we're ready. Let's go, boys. Let's go. We're ready. <laughs> we're the 86 Boston Celtics. I would be Larry Bird. And I'm Kevin McHale. And I'm Danny Ainge. We are the HHS TV Dream Team. Mr. Fourth Quarter. Your mom's worst nightmare. Cam. They were on roids, man. So if you want to challenge Mr. Bishop or any of our staff members, uh, send an email to the link right here. Well, that sure was intense. <laughs> you could say that again. Well, that sure was intense. Nice. Next, our own Ben Leibowitz reviews the film The Greatest Showman. What's going on, HHS? I'm Ben Leibowitz, and today we're going to take a look at The Greatest Showman. For those of you who don't know, The Greatest Showman is a 2017 historical musical drama directed by Michael Gracie in his directorial debut. The film tells the true story of P.T. Barnum and how he rose from poverty to start the world-famous Barnum & Bailey Circus in the late 1800s. It is important to note that the film has a lot of historical inaccuracies, including how Barnum was, in real life, not the likable guy the movie portrays him to be. Inaccuracies aside, the acting is really good, particularly Hugh Jackman as Barnum, and the production design, costume design, and lighting make the film a visual splendor as well. However, the best part about the film is the music which features original songs by Justin Paul and Menj Pasek, who previously scored success with the Oscar-winning film La La Land and the Tony Award-winning Broadway show Dear Evan Henson. These songs are amazing, and the fact that they mix musical theater and pop makes them very interesting and, at times, even lively. In fact, the song This Is Me won a Golden Globe and was nominated for an Oscar, but lost the latter to Remember Me from Disney Pixar's Coco. Well, that's disappointing. Personally, I not only thought that this was a great film, but it may just be my favorite film of 2017. I think it's totally worth checking out. So in the end, I'd give it 8 out of 10 20th Century Fox logos, because why not 20th Century Fox logos? Mac, if you were a film, I'd give you 10 out of 10 21st Century Fox logos. Thanks, Connor. And I would give you 6.2. Coming up next, we have some footage of the web art show. Exciting. You bet. Now for the question of the day. This week's question has to do with the game that is sweeping the nation, Fortnite. We asked you guys, what is your favorite place to land in Fortnite? Take a look. What's your favorite place to land in Fortnite? Gotta go with Loot Lake. I like to go to Tomato Town. I, I always get gold ARs. Lonely Lodge. Uh, Tilted Towers. What's your favorite place to land in Fortnite? Moisty Meyer. Dusty Depot. Haunted Hills. Tomato Town. Anarchy Acres. What's your favorite place to land in Fortnite? Uh, my favorite place to land in Fortnite is probably Snobby Shores. I always land to the second house from the right in the back. Watch this. Chest. I had to cut you off there. Okay. <laughs> Moisty Meyer is the spot to go if you ask me. How many Fortnite wins do you have, Mac? All of them. Incredible. Well, that's all we have for you guys this week. Can you more HHS today? Visit our website at hhs.today to see more extra web-only content. Thank you for watching, fellow students. See you next time.